Annelids are one of the most important phyla there is. When you're talking about taxonomy, phyla is right there near the top. It's actually comparable to things like chordates, which are all vertebrates and their closest relatives like tunicates. But annelids are a little different from vertebrates because they're the worms, basically. Now, there's multiple different types of worms, and this is just one phyla that contains a whole lot of the worms, but it's really important because today there's at least 22,000 species that have been named, and those are just the ones we know about. So they're really important for understanding how different ecosystems work. And they do fill a lot of different niches in those ecosystems. There's earthworms, which, I mean, you know, kind of go around in dirt and eat whatever's laying on the ground, but then you also have things like tube worms and leeches, and even the predatory bobbit worm. So throughout saltwater, freshwater, and even on land, they're very important for how they interact with the rest of the ecosystem. And that's why they're actually looking at this fossil worm coming from the Cambrian Burgess Shale. Ursactus camosa is this new fossil worm coming from the Burgess Shale, and there are other worms that we already know of from the Burgess Shale including things like Burgess Okita. The Burgess Shale overall has a lot of fossils that are really important for understanding this kind of burst of diversity that we see in animal life at the start of the Cambrian and then towards this time during the later Cambrian. But this new animal, Ursactus, is actually really unique because of some of the features it actually doesn't have that most annelids do. Now, first when we actually look at the phylogeny, we do find it belonging to one of the two main groups of annelids, specifically the polychaete worms. This just means they have a lot of these kind of little chitin-like spines or growths off their side, and they generally use these to help them move. However, that's not the more important part. The more important part is the number of segments that this fossil worm has. Segmentation is a really, really useful tool that we see in a lot of animals. Even if you're thinking of something like a fish, the muscles are basically segmented throughout the body. It's just a really good way to produce a body that can move through the water. And that's the thing that's really unique about this worm is it has 10 segments at the most, and a few have slightly fewer, like 8 or 9. Compare this to modern annelids, where there's often several hundred segments. So it's this really, really big change between Ursactus and the later annelids. It might actually be a really good indicator that early on, this kind of growth pattern of just continually adding more segments throughout a long portion of the animal's life really wasn't a major factor in annelid growth. Instead, it's more likely that they slowly added a few segments at a time, but essentially would at some point just cap out and not grow anymore. There are a few modern annelids that do this where they have a hard cap, but a lot of those are really, really small, much smaller than even Ursactus, and those ones often still have about the same number of segments as Ursactus. So not only are they adding more segments throughout their lives, they're also just making much smaller segments, whereas Ursactus has pretty long segments and relatively few of them. It's this really interesting look into how the history of growth in annelids actually started. But segmentation is also useful because you can start to specialize some of the segments for different things. And that's also something we see in Ursactus, specifically with the longer bristles on the back half of the body. Now it's not exactly known what they were used for, but it was likely that they were used for a specific purpose in maneuvering around the substrate or throughout the water column. And again, these are specialized. They're much longer than the other spines that are coming off the other body segments. So there's something very specific that it was doing with the back half of the body that led to this specialization. It also means that that kind of specialization can happen relatively quickly. Like I mentioned, this was the Cambrian just a few tens of millions of years after the Cambrian explosion. So there wasn't as much diversity in many of these animals, at least early on. But then we see things like in Ursactus, there's rapid specialization for some parts of the body. All of this together helps us to understand better how annelids actually evolved and became what they are today, because again, they're kind of everywhere. We've already talked about earthworms, leeches, tube worms. They have a lot of different lifestyles and are often very important for the environment. And so it's just really interesting to see how this early evolution could have taken a different path if things like Ursactus were more selected for, with these longer body segments and fewer of them, as opposed to what we have in modern day earthworms, for example, where again, hundreds of little segments all throughout the body. It's a very interesting change that's helping us to understand a little bit better one of the most diverse phyla that there is.